unfortunately, all of the movements on the left have been destroyed. I mean, you still have residual movements uh, in Europe. Uh, you know, you have a labor party in Germany, it never polls more than 5%, but it's still a factor. Uh, you have communist labor movements in France. We have nothing. I mean, they were completely obliterated. And so we have been left utterly defenseless. And, um, you know, I, I'm too, I've been a reporter too long to start predicting what's going to happen, uh, but I'm certainly very conscious that it could go the wrong way. Um, the problem is that, you know, we, we are imperial. We have an empire, and you don't. And our empire is imploding. And it's imploding internally, the way empires always do. We're collapsing from the center outwards. You see it with, uh, when I wrote this story for the walrus, I went to the city of Scranton, which came very close to declaring bankruptcy this summer, um, to write about, you know, what's happened. I mean, it, it, Scranton, Pennsylvania looks like Bratislava's. You know, these large sort of imperial buildings surrounded by tattoo parlors, and donut shops, and boarded up buildings. And, um, you know, there are looming financial catastrophes, for instance, uh, pension plans, medical benefits that just, they can't pay. It's impossible. They borrow, uh, but, a bit, but it, you know, it's, it's, it's a temporary measure. And, um, and, and what they're doing, and you already see it in cities like Camden, where 75% of the city budget is now spent on police and fire. Uh, you shutter your public libraries, you close your firehouses. Camden, as I just showed, you know, fires their police force. You destroy your teachers. And, uh, and, and, and you unleash forces, both in terms of crime, in terms of chaos, in terms of infrastructures that don't work, garbage that isn't collected. I mean, that is where we're headed. And as the internal mechanisms deteriorate, you bring the harsher forms of control on the outer edges of empire back to the heart of empire. So uh, if you look at a drug bust in Oakland, California, um, it looks no different from a night raid in collusion. Um, they're dressed the same in black. Um, they're wearing infrared goggles. Um, they have command helicopters. Um, they're wearing Kevlar uh, plates. Uh, you know, they have command and control centers, and they're carrying automatic weapons. Uh, and that's what's happened. We are, uh, as all empires do, I mean, you know, all the way back to Thucydides. Thucydides wrote that, you know, the, the tyranny that Athens imposed on others, it finally imposed on itself. And that's what's happened. Um, the danger within America is that we're not prepared emotionally or intellectually for what's happened. We haven't grasped what's happened. We still speak in the language of um, you know, the greatest nation on earth, the most powerful nation on earth, you know, liberty, all these words that are increasingly hollow and empty. Um, and, and, and that is very dangerous because we are fed this mantra that reality is never dependent to what we want. We can have everything we desire as long as we focus on happiness or believe that we're truly exceptional or trust Jesus or, uh, you know, and... And, and, and what that does, I mean, pe people, people strive towards a dream, but people live with an illusion. And we live with an illusion. And, and when you live with an illusion, you essentially remain in a, in a perpetual state of infantile, and you never grow up. And, and so what happens is when the edifice crumbles, you react as a child. You scream for vengeance, new glory, moral renewal, uh, and you become very susceptible very dark forces that are able to manipulate. Um, and, and, and that, unfortunately, the worse it gets, the more Americans come to love for what's happening. So that's the last question. So much for hope and change. <laughs> and I would add, not every teacher's union is broke, thinking of Chicago. Yeah. Um, my question, though, comes out of uh, borrowing from Bob Chesky, who's shown by a couple weeks ago. One of his favorite questions is if you're trying to find out from an alternative source what's going on in the world, if 
do you want to stay in some form in touch with an alternative voice in the media on a regular, ideally daily basis? Where do you go? Democracy Now. Um, I mean, I read the New York Times every day. Uh, you know, for all its faults, it still does investigative journalism, long form journalism. Um, it is the paper of the elite, so it's sort of good to know what the elite is thinking. I listen to BBC News Hour uh, every day. Um, uh, and then I read, I know I use the internet. I mean, I read RX, English edition, which has the best coverage of Palestinians. Or not. Um, I um, read the I read the Guardian website. I'm a news junkie, so. But you know, and there are certain aggregating sites, Common Dreams. Uh, of course, I write for Bob Shear's website, Truth Today, Truth Out. Um, the Real uh, News. Media Capitalism. I mean, there's. If you go, if you're proactive, there's you know there's stuff out there. I mean, I think in the end, it's never a substitute. Uh, you know, you can't, I covered the Middle East for seven years, and you, you would never understand what's happening in the Middle East from reading simply news reports. You have to understand the history of the Balfour Declaration and what happened in 1948 and uh, Darius Seen. And you have to know all um, uh, And sometimes I worry that you know, we get a little too mesmerized by social media and we don't turn it off enough to see.